Hey guys, it's Clockwork Music, and in today's video, we're going to be going through the story of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. In these videos, I'm just going through a quick overview of the album, and I'm just compiling all the information from the Beatles Bible about the album into one video, just so it's nice and you can listen to it. So let's start. As you can see on the left, we've got the track listing. I'll be going over this later, at the end of the video, where I'll be ranking all the songs. It was recorded from the 6th of December 1966 to the 21st of April 1967. The Beatles' 8th UK album caused a seismic shift in popular music. It was recorded in over 400 hours during a 129 day period. Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band helped define the 1967 Summer of Love and was instantly recognised as a major leap forward to modern music. Even more than its predecessor, Revolver, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band saw the Beatles pushing boundaries within the studio, creating sounds which had never been heard before. They made extensive use of orchestras and other hired musicians, and combined variety of musical styles including rock, music hall, psychedelia, tra traditional Indian and Western classical music. From the fairground swells of being for the benefit of Mr Kite, to the animal stampede that closes Good Morning Good Morning, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band signalled to the world that the Beatles were no longer the lovable mop tops of old, unwilling to sing simple love songs and perform for crowds who were more interested in screaming than listening. Prior to the release, the Beatles had ceased touring and largely retreated from public view, and Penny Lane slash Strawberry Fields Forever had failed to top the UK singles chart after its February 1967 release. The genesis of Sgt Pepper came from their return flight from Kenya to London on the 19th of November 1966. Unable to sleep on the overnight journey, McCartney toyed with the idea of creating an identity for the Beatles to allow them to experiment and display their maturity to the audience. The title came from a conversation between McCartney and Evans about the sachets marked with S and P which came with their in-flight meals. For perhaps the first time, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band saw Paul McCartney emerging as the creative leader of the Beatles. There was however a strong feeling of collective creativity among the group, with a concerted push to achieve something special. Having finished touring in August 1966, the Beatles were free to spend time in the studio working on the next masterpiece. As EMI owned the studio at Abbey Road, time and cost were of little consequence, and the Beatles knew that the songs recorded wouldn't have to be performed live. The first songs to be recorded for Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band were When I'm 64, Strawberry Fields Forever, and Penny Lane. When I'm 64 actually had its origins in the Beatles' Hamburg days, although it was recorded in December 1966. Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields Forever, meanwhile, were taken for the group's first single of 1967 a decision which George Martin later described as a dreadful mistake. The album's monumental closer, A Day in the Life, was recorded from the 19th of January 1967, becoming the second Sgt Pepper song to be taped. The third was the title track, which was recorded on the 1st of February. The album was recorded on four track machines at the time, eight tracks were only available in the US commercial studios though. This undoubtedly caused the Beatles to think creatively, creatively about how to best use the recording technology at their disposal. As with their previous album, reduction mixes were also used to free up spare tracks and allow the group to continue recording. The reprised version of the title song was the one and only album to be not mixed in this way. A Day in the Life arguably saw the Beatles at their peak of their creative powers. The song perfectly combined fragments by both John Lennon and Paul McCartney, and the impact of the two orchestral crescendos and the final crashing piano chord have scarcely lessened with the passing years. George Martin and Paul McCartney conducted the orchestral glissando with Martin supplying some basic instructions to the musicians, many of whom were from the Royal Philharmonic and London Symphony Orchestras. The final Sgt Pepper recording session took place on the 21st of April 1967. Creative to the last, the Beatles decided that there should be no silence at the end of the album. Instead, they recorded a burst of nonsensical gibberish, which was pressed in the album's run-out groove, following a brief high-pitched 15 kilohertz tone intended for dogs. I don't think I said kilohertz right, I'm not really sure. An early version of the track listing had the songs on side one in a slightly different order, possibly in an attempt to prolong the idea of the stage show. In early April 1967, the album had the songs in this order. Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, with a little help from my friends, being for the benefit of Mr Kite, Fixing a Hole, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Getting Better and She's Leaving Home. Although the music of Sgt Pepper was a major step forward for popular music, the cover concept was also a considerable innovation. It nearly didn't happen however. The Beatles had talked out of using an illustration by The Fool. 
the design group that painted the mural on the side of the Apple Shop in London. The widely imitated artwork, directed by Robert Fraser and designed by Peter Blake and his wife, Jan Hayworth, saw the Beatles position beneath a collage of famous names standing on a floral display and behind the iconic Sgt Pepper drum, painted by fairground artist Joe F. Grave. Among the figures in the cover background collage were Alistair Crowley, Mae West, Carl Jung, Edgar Allan Poe, Bob Dylan, Stuart Sutcliffe, Aldous Huxley, Marilyn Monroe, Lauren Ellen Hardy, Karl Marx, Oscar Wilde, Lewis Carroll, Albert Einstein, Marlene Dietrich and Diana Dawes. The cover photography for Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was taken by Michael Cooper at his studio in Chelsea, London on the 30th of May 1967. The Beatles also posed for the pictures used on the back cover and inside the gate vault. So here's just some images of uh, what the photography looked like on that day and as you can see in the bottom right you've got the, uh, the very highly saturated uh, version of it um, which was definitely the, uh, the best choice in my opinion. So let's move on. The gatefold sleeve also features for the first time on a modern pop record. The lyrics were printed on the back cover and the package included cardboard cutouts based on the Sgt Pepper concept. The total cost for the cover was £2,865, an immense sum for the time. Also on the back sleeve was a photograph of the Beatles with McCartney turning his back to the camera. This picture later became part of the Paul is Dead myth along with the OPP badge he wore on the inner sleeve. It stood for Ontario Provincial Police, although some misread it as officially pronounced dead. The Beatles spent more time working on the mono mixes than the stereo ones for Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. The group attended all mono mix sessions, but the stereo version was made in three days in April 1967. Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was released in the United Kingdom on the 1st of June 1967. The album spent a total of 140 weeks on the charts from the 3rd of June 1967. It debuted at number 8 on pre-orders alone. Sgt Peppers was the fourth UK long player by the Beatles to have no singles taken from it, following With the Beatles, Beatles for Sale and Rubber Soul. In the US it was released on the 2nd of June 1967, a day after the UK first had it. It spent 88 consecutive weeks in the Billboard 200, during which time it spent 15 weeks at number 1 and in total spent 175 weeks on the chart. Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band sold 11 million copies in the US and 30 million copies worldwide. In 2003, Rolling Stone magazine ranked Sgt Pepper's at number one in its poll of the 500 greatest albums of all time. The album also inspired a 1978 musical feature film, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, starring Peter Frampton, the Bee Gees, Frank Howard and Steve Martin. So here we go to my rankings. On the left we've got the, uh, the track list and on the right we've got my rankings. So in number one, I've gone Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, then with a little help from my friends, She's Leaving Home, When I'm 64, A Day in the Life, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, Getting Better, Fixing a Hole, Lovely Rita, Been for the Benefit of Mr Kite, Within Without You, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, uh, The Reprise, and Good Morning, Good Morning. So that was my quick story of Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. As I said at the beginning, all of this information is from the Beatles Bible, and I'm just compiling into this video just so it's nice and you can all listen to it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe because we are so close to a thousand subscribers. Let me know what your favourite song from this album is and why, and what your favourite album is in terms of the Beatles. Soon I'll be covering Magical Mystery Tour and all the other albums. So this has been Clockwork Music, and thank you for watching.